Well, hello, and welcome back to part two of working on our Sherlock Holmes journal. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that have done these journals, and I've been wanting to do one for, oh, I'd say about two years now. Um, I've always been a Sherlock Holmes junkie. Um, my dad has too, so... Uh, I'm just now finally getting into doing it. It's kind of behind the curve a little bit according to others on the web, but I really don't care because, you know, this is me, this is my world, this is my crafting corner. How is everybody today? I hope you are having a wonderful day. Um, I added a little bit of, uh, I darkened the blue a little bit, okay? Um, only because I went to show my grandson and ask him what he thought. And he said, Mimi, he says, that looks like the TARDIS. Any who junkies out there will know exactly what I'm talking about. But so I darkened it a little because honestly, it really did look like the TARDIS. So I know, know what to do when I go to do my Doctor Who journal for my daughter. I even sent her a picture. I said, what does this look like? She goes, it looks like the TARDIS. I'm like, you suck. <laughs> But, you know, hey, it'll look better when I get the 221B and the door knocker and, and all of that. So, but, okay. Um, next, this, <laughs> rewind. This go around, we're working on signatures. I was cutting out um, pages to size just to kind of save time. Uh, what I did do, though, was I did add two little things here for pockets. Okay. And that was all I did. And what I used was that, that big piece that was this. Um, I used this and I just cut it, cut it out cut pieces out for that. So we're going to set this aside for now. Uh, sorry about my tongue turning, twisting, tying tornado lips. I am obviously not. I know why. I have not had my coffee yet. You know what? Okay, let me turn this over. Uh, which is so cool. I'm going to leave this here for just a minute. And I am going to go grab a cup of coffee. I will be right back. Okay, I know that was like a split second for you, but that actually took me about 10 minutes. But, gave you a really pretty thing to look at, right? This is one of the um, Graphic 45 pages. And what I did was I went through and cut out some extra pages for the signatures, because remember me showing you in the last video um, that I had four signatures uh, with just plain paper and they were coffee dyed. And so what I did was I went ahead and I opened these up, measured how long they were, and then cut out some paper to match. So that's just to kind of fill in the signatures and give it a little bit more, oh well, well la di da, where did it go? Okay, I just had the silly thing. There it is. Okay, the bone folder. Kind of give it a little bit of, um... Uh, what do you call it? Pizzazz or something in the middle. So we'll go every couple pages. We'll throw that in. And I love the double-sided pages because it also gives you... Um, okay, wow. Doink, doink. I'm not even in frame. All right. So then right there. And let me get another one and I will put... I will put this one solid black one in the center. Uh, 
actually. I'll put the black one right here. Put these here. Pull out the center one. And leave that there. Now it's a little bit, a little bit more than it was. Um, let's set that one aside. Now this one I had some ledger paper from that one paper pad I showed you. So I just cut a piece of that out. Let's do the same thing with this. We'll do a black up close. Honestly, these um, signatures with the coffee dyes, I was testing out different formulas and uh, ended up with, what do you call it? I'm trying to do it this way. <sighs> Some papers that didn't quite come out the way I wanted. So instead of, um, you know, throwing them out or doing whatever, I just cut them in half because they were just eight and a half by 11 pieces of uh, really light cardstock. And I, what I did was I soaked them overnight. A lot of times, you know, we don't soak them that long because uh, you'd think the paper would go icky on us. But for some reason, it changed the, the density of the papers that I soaked and made them feel hmm, a little bit thicker. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a chemistry major, so I have no clue how that works. All right, so there's that one. We're going to do this one. And it was just really easy to just you know, cut them in half and fold them and say, all right, well, well these will be signatures later. <laughs> and I've held on to them for a little while. I didn't make these for the Sherlock journal. I just had them set aside. I've got like a whole drawer full of um, uh, pre-started signatures. You know, for example, um, let me see. I'll lean over here and get these that I started on another thing. I was using my uh, jelly plate for some of these prints. Here's two more signatures that I started. And not all of them will, you know, will be the same size. But, let me move my coffee back. You know, for example, I was just using my jelly plate pieces here and there. This is when I first got my jelly plate and I was testing everything out on it. <laughs> I had so much fun. <laughs> I really did. So, and then, you know, this is not quite the same size, but almost so they could almost work together as a sig, you know, as matching signatures. So, but yeah, so I have. I have drawers with scrap paper that I have set off to the side that I thought, okay, well, this is kind of the same size, and I scoot it all together, and then I fold it, and I'm like, ooh, that'll make a great signature, and then I'll just clip it and throw it aside. And when I decide to do work on a journal, then I can go through that and say, okay, well, this is the size I want to make, because this is the size I already have. <laughs> Alrighty. So we will leave the black right there this time. I think... I'm going to go ahead and use this one. And I'm not, I'm not, you know, counting every page and saying, okay, every other page is going to have this and nah. It just, wherever I decide to throw one in there, that's where it's going to go. All 
All right, and I really like doing this. I love the double-sided pages. So all I'm doing really is um, filling out the signatures, you know, giving them a little bit more character. And go ahead and throw that in there like that. Uh-oh, did I miss one? I really did. Does this go in this one? No, this one goes, yay. Okay, well, let us see how this is going to work. There we go. All right, there's that one, and then there's these three for this one. But yeah, so now obviously I'm going to work on the signatures in individually, but if I want uh, a cohesiveness all the way through the journal, then I'm going to split up the pages throughout all four signatures. So that way, and you know, once I get it together, if I don't like it, I can just pull them right out again. I don't have to leave it as is. I wonder if that looks better after that or that one. Or leave it. No, I don't want the white. I think the black better. So. It may be where one of these won't fit, or I don't like the way it looks, or, you know, whoops, those are extras. Okay, let's see how that's going to go. Alrighty then. So now that we put them together, I don't trim them until I'm done, period, because then it just, it makes no sense to me. And this is bigger than this, so I may just put this one on the outside. Yep, that fits better. I like that better too. See how that works? Let's see, will one of these work better? Yeah, this is the inside one, so, whoops. And it's all about preference of taste. If you don't like it, you know, then by all means change it. Good grief. Alrighty, then we'll go this way. Huh. Yep. We shall do it like that. I think that works a little bit better. Let's see if something in here will work. No, that's okay, because I like the difference. There, those colors kind of work a little bit better. Ah, <sighs> Now you may think the bind or binding on this is a little bit too wide for just these itty bitty signatures. But if you um, looked at the first video, you'll see that uh, before I added these, these looked really, really small. Now, the problem I've had before, and it's been my mistake, is I've made the journal cover and the binding way too small for what I wanted to put in it. And it ends up coming out black. <laughs> Let me get an example. Uh, it's a Halloween journal I made last year. Yeah, here it is. You might have seen this before. But see, I made the binding on this thing. I only put two signatures in it. You see that? Wait, there you go. Two signatures. 
That was all I did. So look how wide it got. Now, if I would have, and you can even see right there, only one, two signatures. If I would have considered, but this was the first journal I'd ever done like this. First ever. So, if I would have sunk about it a little bit more, um, the binding, even with just two uh, signatures, if I would have made the binding at least twice as big, would have worked out a whole lot better. You know, for example, when I made this one in one of my videos, there's three signatures. But this one is, where'd my ruler go? There it is. It's about one and three quarters inches, as opposed to the half inch that the other one was. <laughs> but yeah, so this is, I haven't quite finished this one yet, but almost. This one will be for sale when I'm finished with it too. One for, I'm making for my dad. It's got a fabric cover. It's got four signatures, but I didn't sew these in. He wanted to be able to take one out and use one at a time for each trip he wanted to take or each adventure he went on. So I used big rubber bands. He also wanted a place to be able to store a pen or a pencil. And so I made little rubber things right here. Uh, where's my pencil? So that when he takes it out um, with him, he's got something that will hold his pencil or ink pen or whatever. And he chose the napkins because the napkin covers. He chose the papers for the inside. I mean, he chose all of it. All I did was... Um, you know, put it together for him. But this was done in another video. And I'm not done because I still have to put the, uh, the book corners and I have to do something on the front. But he hasn't come up with an image he wants me to put on it, so I have to let it set. Since he's designing it, I'm just making it for him. He's telling me what he wants. Okay, so we've got four signatures. I'm not even sure. This is pretty hard. Is that the first thing we want to see? Is this the first thing we want to see? Yeah, we want to see something that says... Sherlock. It's funny how that comes. That came in upside down. But I think we'll do this one first. But going to have to measure. It's three inches. Oh, I stink at math so bad. This is one of my favorite coffee cups. I don't know, you can't tell right at the moment, but it's got an, a raised image with two little girls, stick girls, um, hugging each other. And at the bottom it says friends. And on the other side it says, There is nothing like a hug from a friend and you are always there with one. Thank you for your friendship. And then on the inside it says the bonds we have are everlasting. Um, my best friend Devana, I met her in 1988. It was right after my motorcycle accident. And now... Uh, her and I have been best friends ever since. We call each other uh, platonic soulmates. And our 
tradition is um, whenever we visit, we each will buy the same coffee cup. Okay, we'll each we'll pick out a coffee cup that we both like. I'll buy one, she'll buy one, the exact same mug. And then after we leave the store and we get back to wherever we're staying, either at her place, my place, or a hotel if we met up somewhere in the United States somewhere. And I'll give her mine and she'll give me hers. So we trade coffee cups. And every time we drink out of them at home, we know where it makes us think of each other. And it's, it's, it's a goofy girl thing, but, you know, hey, it is what it is, right? All right, so this was there and three. I really stink at this. So if it's three inches, I'm going to do this the hard way. Ah, no, it's three inches, so we'll go right there. So we'll try it half inch. There's one, two, three, four. Nope need them a little bit bigger so let's try it I know isn't it awful I'm like there's probably a better way and I know somebody out there is going no 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 do it this way it will work I promise all right so let's try it this way all right there's half so I can do two here on this side so it's one and a half inches if we'll go a half inch Three quarters. Okay, let's see if that will work. Yeah, give or take. Alrighty. So give or take, we will go one, two, Three, four. Pull this one out just a little. All right, and then we'll go in the middle. And we'll go one, two, three, four. I may do four stitches instead of three. So we'll go one, two, three, four. All right. I'm going to draw a light line. I really like this. This looks like wallpaper. Feels like wallpaper too. It's pretty awesome. Well, I guess I should probably, okay, half, half an inch, oh, come on, and then we'll come up a half an inch, right here, but we'll see. Anyways, this is the general placement, vertically anyway, don't have horizontal placement yet, but that's okay. I was watching um, one of my favorite YouTubers who works on journals, and she has um, great ideas. Um, I don't have many favorites because um, I, I don't get out there, you know, very often. But two, uh, three off the top of my head are... Um, uh, Stacy Evans at Pink Poodle Crafts. Um, the second one is uh, Caged Fish. And the third one, which is the one I was talking about, I was watching last night, was Nick the Booksmith. I love watching her. She's got some great ideas uh, for, you know, journaling or even things to add to a journal. Or, I don't know, it's just, I love her style and I love the way she does things. 
and she was calling it, I think she was calling it a pouch folio thingy. <laughs> but I want to try it. And she used a manila folder, a uh, scrap, you know, a leftover manila folder for that. I thought that was pretty daggum cool. So, let's see. Yeah, that's about right. Okay. I just wanted to kind of get those out of the way. Now, I don't put them in first anymore, only because I may have to, to separate and make these a little bigger. And if these are too big, I may end up having to take out a signature because I don't want it. I don't want this to end up being any wider than that. You know, I don't want a journal that sits out like that. So let's start one at a time. I haven't really gotten anything done, have I? And it's been 20 some minutes into it, but I apologize. I love talking, talking, talking. Not really. Sometimes I'll just hush up and just not say anything for days. The one thing when I started videos was uh, I couldn't get past. I'm like, how the heck can I sit here and talk about something? To absolutely nobody you know I'm not sitting in front of anybody nobody's talking back to me or giving me input or you know any other ways to lead the conversation to continue when you're a youtuber or a videographer or anything like that, that you're producing your own videos you have to be able to carry on a conversation with you the viewer and um, be able to keep it moving along. Sometimes that's easy. Sometimes it's not so much. <laughs> but Okay, so what kinds of things can we do to the inside of these? Now, I know. Let me pause. I'm going to go grab some stuff and I'll be right back. Okay. Well, I went and got some stamps and stuff that I thought would work and that way some of the blank pages that we could use we can kind of fill up with other things so let's see <sighs> these little foamy pads that you find see they're, they've got a little bit of give they're great all right if you ever get a chance you can order them. They're not very expensive. The one I got was uh, the one I got was from Doris. Um, it was huge, and I only cut a piece out. Um, and this thing has lasted me a couple years already, and I haven't even touched the other piece that I got out, and it, it cost me less than two dollars. A big foam sheet, like eleven by sixteen or fourteen by sixteen. I mean, it was pretty huge, and uh, but it, it's great. Because what it does is it helps, it sinks in a little bit and your stamp goes into the paper just slightly enough that gives you a better, more complete image. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It just works that way. Now for me, I have no idea. I'm not very good at stamping. Okay. It's just something I've always wanted to do. So I'm going to kind of put this, actually, I want to kind of play that off a little, you know, kind of stamp off the excess because I don't want it really dark. Yeah, just very light. Let's see, what else can we use? I got a stack. I got this for two dollars. A stack of suitcases. Let's see. And it looks like I haven't used them, but honestly, what I do every so often when I'm organizing my stamps or whatever, I'll sit there with um, an alcohol pad or um, some stamp cleaner, and I will go through and I will stamp my. Uh, I will clean up all my. Oh, now, see, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to stamp it off. But that's okay. Let's 
Let's see. See, even that third image is nice. Set that there. This one is a clock. So. Clock there, clock here. Mm. Let's see, first image there, second image there. We'll do a third image right there. It's very faint, very faint, but it works. You know, so this is kind of just an idea. Oh, let's do some binoculars. And I'm not doing black, okay? Black is so stark. Use a dark gray, maybe, if you're trying to go for a sort of a background type look. Um, see how that image comes out really nice? You can see that right there. Um, not on the foam, and I got something like that, which part of it is not showing up. So, okay, what else can we use? Well, we want to put some over here. So let's put that there. There we go. And we'll put maybe this one here, there. there. I'm not trying to, you know, win awards for stamping. I'm just trying to make a very easy background. And I'm floating it out on others, you know, to give me that ghost image, that second, that second image. It's really nice. I'm just kind of spreading it out. And I'm sure there's more. I'm focusing more on this one than anything. That was nice. This one I need to put on a that doesn't want to stick. Give it a little bit of spit and polish, see if that works. good already. See this one I just started and that was just first prints and ghost prints and and not that come out really nice. And this may not be for you. This may not be something that you know interests you but It tickles the crap out of me, let me tell you. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Kelly, you are not right. You are just absolutely off your rocker. Off your rocker. So let's do that one right there. Okay. Uh, do we have another one? Yes, let's do this one. Give it a little bit of spit. This one says inspire, so we'll put that there, we'll throw a word in there, we'll throw this right there, and I'm what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm overlapping them, I'm double, you know, printing, ghost printing, getting second prints, whatever you want to call it, 
just to try and create some uh, interest, some background. All of it's not going to show up, which is fine. And I know I've missed a bunch, so if I have to come back and add to it, that's fine too. And I'm just printing over. Wow, that's even light enough where you can't hardly see. Okay, so that's what I've done for the inside. That was a one-sided piece of scrapbook paper. I just wanted to give it some oomph, right? So let's see. So that's that one. That gives some of those blank pages a little bit of, uh, and there will be more, you know, like for instance, um, that would be really icky. Yeah, some of these uh, rubber stamps you get with the, they don't work super well, but I want that to come in a little bit nicer. This I'm just using Memento's Rich Cocoa. That's the color I'm using if you're curious. Perfect. Right. Kind of lopsided, but that's okay as well. I don't do all of mine that way, but I do do some of mine. I do do. That is so fabulous. Okay. Let's see. Anything else? So this is just one way to spruce up plain pages in your signature. Let me put it back over here so you guys can see. Now, on black, I have an idea. Give me just a second, see if I did get it. If it didn't come in the mail, then that's really going to stink, but we'll see. Okay, it did come in. It took me forever to find something that was within my budget range. This is from Color Block, or Color Box, I'm sorry. This is called Frost White, and it's a pigment ink, which means it takes longer to dry. Um... And I probably brought this up before, but um, when I first started, I didn't know the difference between the inks and why a chalk ink or a dye-based ink or a pigment ink, what the difference was. I never figured it out. I just knew that sometimes a chalk ink worked better and sometimes, you know, a pigment ink worked better. But I didn't like the fact that if you didn't heat set it, the pigment ink, you could smear it really easily. Not knowing, you know, the difference. Like this is pigment, this is dye, and I do have chalk, it's just in, it's in, in on the other side of the room and I'm not going to get up. But what I figured out was um, the differences were the drying times, okay? You've got uh, chalk, and think of it alphabetically, okay? Chalk with the C dries quicker. Dye with a D, dye-based ink, dries a little, it takes a little bit longer to dry. And then P, pigment, takes the longest to dry. So, I mean, that was the only difference I could find. But when I found it, it worked for me really well. So, honestly, I want to see how it's going to work on black paper. This is the first time I've ever used it. I'm sure you guys have used it 
and it's worked great. And you guys, you know, can say, you know, hey, she's a dumbass because she doesn't know her butt from her elbow. But hey, this is the first time for me, and I like sharing. <laughs> I don't like color box because uh, I don't care for them as much because they're ink pads. They're, there's no substance to them. I mean, it's just like, bleh. But for a first time, I think I'll deal with it. And we'll see how the colors work. Maybe the colors work. And I'm just not happy because I'm being too picky. So let's see. Now see, that's nice. It's not very bright. It's not in your face. But it's enough to show up. So I do like that. Alright, but I am going to get a different ink pad. I did get to re-inker for this, though, because, you know, hey, it's honestly, I find that when I buy ink pads now, I didn't used to do this before, but when I buy ink pads, I automatically get a re-inker with it, because by the time I get done to the end of using the one ink, the ink pad I like, I find I can never find the re-inker for it. Ooh, that came out really nice. Look at that. I like that. Let's put that in here, too. Nice on a second print. Well, cool beans. Let's see how the binoculars go. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, I can seriously get up on this one. Oh, that really sounded bad. I really didn't mean it like that. Okay, I promise. Okay, so, and I'll go through and do the other uh, signatures, you know, throughout the pages with stamping and, and things like that to get that done and out of the way. Let me see. I really like how that turned out with the white on the black. I think I'm going to play just a little bit longer with it because I think it came out fabulous. Fabulous. So, whoa, it's going to fall. There. Ooh. Okay. And even if later on I decide I'm going to put a pocket and cover up some of this, that's okay too. Because what did it cost me? A few seconds of what? fun <laughs> learning like ooh yay <clears throat> okay let me get this one over here so I can work on some of the black here there we go Okay, put that one aside. We're going to do this again, but I'm only going to do half of it. I probably need to invest in getting some of those bigger ones, you know, like just the black, the brown, and the white, I believe. Those are the only colors I'd really need for the big ones, for the bigger stamps. But if not, that's okay too. But yeah, so all I'm doing is going through and adding a little bit of uh, depth to some of the pages. So that's what I think it is, is. You add the more layers, the more depth, the more rounded out it ends up being. Which is kind of cool. Oh, that one was upside down. Ah, well, oh well. <laughs> Kind of cool, to be honest. Okay. There. I 
I'm not even filling it up. I'm not filling in the whole ink pad or the whole stamp. I'm just kind of throwing at it whatever is coming. That is so cool. I don't know why it took me so long to play with black paper and white ink. Good grief. Okay, now this one's already there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and ghost print right over top of whatever's there. Because pigment ink takes longer to dry. <sighs> faint, 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 faint. That's okay. There we go. Alrighty. Since I've already got it out, I'll go ahead and just start marking up some of the... Oh. There we go. Marking up some of the black on the other signature since it's already out. in the center and then off to the side I'm going to just do the side and cut it off you know like half on half off see how that worked there we go oh I like that There's that one, and one more. <sighs> okay. Wow, did not realize I would have so much fun That's it for this one. Let's see. Just gonna wipe these off. Just get some of the excess, not a whole lot. But I will say, I really like this concept. All right, so now I'm going to that one. There. It's all about layers. And I'm learning that out the hard way, okay? One of my biggest hang-ups when I started junk journals or, like, that's one of the things I don't like about Shabby Chic. I'm still having a hard time working with Shabby Chic because there's so many layers when you're working on um, something that's, you know, got so much lace and fabric and ribbons and things like that. And when I would watch other people do it, it was like every time they'd put a layer down, they put another layer on top of it and cover it up and you wouldn't see the layer in the first place. So I thought, I'm so creative, right? I'm just going to skip those first couple of layers and just do the top layer. And it never, ever, ever comes out as beautiful or as full or as rich as some of the others do um, who do that. 
And, you know, so that's like my, uh, I don't know. I just, I have a hard time with that because it, it feels like such a waste. But the end product doesn't turn out becoming a waste. It becomes, you know, it's very beautiful. So that's something I'm having a hard time getting over. But with stamping, you know, there's, there's no worries about covering up the layers because, you know, it's transparent and you can pretty much, you know, like the first one I did was the keyhole. You can still see the keyhole. And then the next one I did was the part postcard one. You can still see that. And then just now I'm doing the suitcase one. So, yeah. Oh, I forgot all about this side, but that's okay. See? One, two, three. Now that came out cool. <laughs> Look at that. Whoops. Look at that. Just a deep to dee. Okay, we'll leave that there. Then, like I said, I'm not even, I'm not measuring, I'm not lining up my shots. All I'm doing is every so often I'm turning my stamp. That's it. All right, so this one is done. Now, I would suggest uh, when you're stamping layers like this to do your bigger ones first and then work your way down to the smaller ones. You have a lot less frustration that way. So let's see, what can we do on this? That one's, ah, I think that one's okay. That one I could probably, I don't want that one. Let's do this. There we go. And you can also decide whether or not you need to add anything, like right here. There. That's cool. That came out so cool. It actually makes me think I'm good at something. All right, so we'll do that one. Now you see how I'm going through each signature, right? And it's just random. I'm not, I'm not lining up shots. I'm not... Um, making sure everything is even. Like I'm not even going to put anything on that one. This one I will. Just put it right in the middle. And some of the impressions are lighter and some are a little bit brighter, but that's okay. okay right there. Honestly, when I was putting the black in here, I didn't realize or didn't, I wasn't thinking how I could possibly, I mean, I was just like, oh, great. I'm just going to throw a couple pockets on it and maybe, you know, some glitter or something. And I don't know. I didn't think I could really do anything with just the black cardstock. But obviously, I can. And I'll probably be using a lot more of these. This one I just wanted to add all over the place, so that's kind of cool. You see that? Oh, let's see. Wow, I keep ending up off, off the screen. Now down here, I'll just put that right there. And honestly, I believe, I believe I can fly. Okay, no. Alrighty. I don't even know who sings that song. I'm really bad about it. Okay, so that was that as far as the black goes. I'm sure I could come up with some more, you know, stamping for the brown, for the pages that are still, and I might. Oh. Let's see, we haven't used this one yet. So I might use him. And... Well, let's use him. And we'll put some brown on him. Alrighty. 
let's see where we want to put him. Put him right there. Even if it's just one stamp. Uh, he's kind of specific, so I'll just put one of him per signature, I think. I've got another set. Like, I got these at Tuesday mornings, right? Or Tim Holtz. This is Stampers Anonymous. This was a Halloween stamp set. And I got a couple more. But the one I, I wanted to use on my Sherlock Holmes journal, I can't find it anywhere. And I just had it. So I figured, okay, I'm putting things away. So I'm going to be clever and put it in a spot that I won't forget where it's at because I need it. Because I knew I was going to start working on my journal. And now I can't find the silly thing. <sighs> so... And what's great about stamping is when you're fine, when you're adding more layers or, you know, of other things, not just stamps, but say you're adding pockets or pages or graphics or tags or anything like that. If there's one stamp that came out and it's not in the spot you want it, cover it up. You know, it's not major surgery, which is kind of cool because, you know, hey, <laughs> it just is what it is. That's how we roll, right? We don't like it. Cover it up. Actually, I think, no, wait, if it's going to be this way, I think I will put it right here. And if worse comes to worse, if it's upside down, so, I believe I just put this one upside down. No, I didn't, I don't guess. Alrighty, so that's another one. It's kind of cool, isn't it? I mean, I like being able to create things with just your mind. You could probably put this on. Let me make sure it's even. I put this cutting mat underneath my glass to help me with um, lining things up. I'm not always good at it, trust me. It sucks. But... Add a couple of these guys. Push him out of the way. But I find on coffee dyed paper, using the rich cocoa is a lot nicer. You get a better... Um, overall look than using strictly black. There we go. Get him there. And like I said, I'm not trying to make every one of these signatures the same. I'm really not. But um, copying certain elements into each signature that are the same helps them be cohesive and, you know, brings them together a little bit better. Ready? Let's see. Is this something I've already done that in? No. Okay, here we go.
see. Did I do the last one yet? Here's that one. Let me see. That one, that one. We'll do him on this side. <sighs> I know when I get to, when I do find my other ones, I'm not filling all this up, obviously, because there's another set of stamps I have that I would like to use. And even if they just end up being background stamps, you know, I that's what I got them for. I mean, I got them to use them, and now I can't find the silly things, which is really, really, really frustrating. But that's okay. That's what happens when you're not finished. Oh, loud noise. Okay. So on that note, it's I've been an hour. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Um, I might, you know, do another one later in a little bit. But I tried. I want to try and keep these at, you know, at an hour a piece. So that way. People don't feel like they're stuck at their computer or their laptop or their tablet for hours and hours and hours just to see what um, what the project is. And because, you know, some people have the impression that to make a junk journal um, takes about 10 minutes. It can, honestly, and it'll look really good, too. But then there's some with themes and things like that that don't take just, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. And I don't know. But this was just the stamping, you know, which kind of, kind of cool. And there's some blank pages, which is okay. Right there. You know, I don't have any embellishments made for this yet, which might be, I don't know if it'll be the next one or if we'll still work on signatures. But depending on how I feel and what I can come up with, I found some really neat ideas that I might I might run with from another YouTuber. And yes, I will give credit. I don't copy anybody without giving credit because I think that's just the way life should be. I mean, if you take credit for somebody else's invention or somebody else's idea, you suck, period. Um... Own it, you know. If you did it, great. If you didn't do it and you got the idea from somebody else, give that person credit. Give them props because you wouldn't be doing it if they didn't do it. So, anyway. But, okay, I'm going to let you go. Uh, remember, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up. Yeah, I had to cut all my nails off. Oh, my gosh. When I was moving, I kept breaking them and breaking them and breaking them. So, I just filed them all down and said, I'll just start over. But anyways, give me a thumbs up if you like my video, okay? If you think I should do anything different, or if you have any great ideas, you know, put them down in the comments. That would be great. Fabulous. Awesome. Um, if you haven't subscribed and you would like to, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I guess it's down on this corner right there. I could be wrong. I'm probably upside down and it needs to be like, where is it? Right there. On this corner. <laughs> if you want notifications, click the bell. Okay. If you're interested in joining my uh, Facebook group, it's Coffee Cup Crafts with Kelly. There's a link down in the box below. Um, and always remember, always, always, always find the humor in life. Because even last year when things were so bad, I couldn't find the humor. I had a hard time anyway. And, uh, it was, it was a very dark time. Okay. Humor mm, is a lifesaver. I promise. And, uh, if you can't find the humor in life, life sucks. It really does. But I'm gonna let you go. I hope to see you for part three. Um, obviously there's going to be a part three. Um, let me know if you're interested in purchasing it when it's finished, uh, leave me a comment or um, send me a, a private message on Facebook. Um, my Facebook name is Kelly Rickman. Um, and have a great day. Okay. I will see you guys next time. God bless.